If you haven't seen any of the information yet, we're running a crowdfunding campaign to try and keep the gamers table on the air. All the old shows won't go away, but new shows might be a thing of the past if we aren't able to meet some of these goals. It's really important. It's sort of a make or break thing for the gamers table, the gamers table independent edition, uh, cooking with Craig, game on design series, did you read the book, magic with Chris, and whatever else we're going to be coming up with this year, as long as we have the funding to a be able to keep the studio and keep us on this year. So don't forget to uh, click, go to the page, make a donation, help keep us on the air. See ya. Welcome to the Gamers Table. It is Monday, and we're reviewing Relic, Relic Runners. Runners. Hey, I apologize hey, in advance for everything being freaking invisible green. Oh yeah, there's a lot of green in this artwork. The ancient relics the had relic lain reader. dormant in the darkest reaches of the jungle since time immemorial, but once, uh, but word of their discovery broke out. All manner of would-be archaeologists rushed in. The retired university professor. The bombastic explorer, the lith but daring Harris. Lithe. Lithe? Okay. <laughs> and a shadowy former army captain all want to be the first to lay their hands on the precious loot. Hey, have you ever seen um, Indiana Jones or Laura Croft or anything like that? That's who these characters are. We got uh, a whole bunch of different... Your relics. Relics. Yeah. You got your froggy relics, your crystal head relics, your little scary bird relics. relics. I like the purple one. Bird. And Nomad Mask of Doom relics. I like them. I like that guy. Ah. And you got your bunch of temples. That's what he's doing. And are they all temples? No, those are no. Uh, those are just ruins. Temples and ruins and whatever they're all called. And then you got your, your relics, oh pieces. And your player boards. And your, your supplies. supplies. And your yes. victory point tokens and supplies. And your tools. And, of course, the rule book. And your book. tools. Each player gets their own <coughs> player board. <laughs> player board. Um, we suggest you give them out randomly if you're going to use the more advanced side. Because in the basic side, everybody's the exact same. But otherwise, everybody gets a start of game little advantage. It's not a huge advantage. It's sort of like, okay, you don't have to place your first track step you've already got it placed or you're already out or you're near this you start with an extra supply it's little stuff that's not going to break the game but it makes everybody slightly different and other than that it just explains for you what all the powers that you can get with your toolboxes and has places for you to put all your stuff it's a really fun game <laughs> first you set up the board yes. and it's got some neat stuff here because all the temples are a bottom part and a middle part and a top part, so they're all sort of three-dimensional on the board. And each time you go there and explore it, you'll flip over that. You'll take that one, and if it's purple, you'll flip it over. Otherwise, you'll leave it down, but the next person gets the next one. Once it's all explored, that goes away, and one of these goes in its place. These are the main things you're trying to get to the This oh, is end the game. Now, you can't just go and grab this relic. You have to do what's called a relic run. And you have to start where one of these is and go to where another one is and you get that one, not the one you started at. So there's always options for more people to get stuff because, oh, you got that purple one, but there's another purple connection. I can start here and go there and get a purple one. Or somebody grabs the one before you and just, oh, no, I can't get it. Oh, okay, I got a plan to try and get another. Or I put too many pieces out and now I can't get anywhere. It sounds confusing, I know. Yeah, it's there's not. timing to this, like bouncing back and forth between the same color of temple to knock it down evenly before someone else can get to it or watch them knock the other one down and then you're doing this one over here and then it's just the timing just to see who can get the relic first or something. It's, it's pretty fun. But uh, I like this one with an even number of players. I think four. Like we played with three, the three of us, and it was fun, but I think four would be better because... 
when you're on the board and you got all the temples spread out fairly evenly in that, uh, two people could be interfering with each other on one side of the board while the other guy is free to do whatever the hell he wants, which I ended up doing a couple of times on the other side. So I think four would be perfect because then you get a little more interaction there and uh, not letting one person kind of almost run away with it. So the big thing about all these you can get is they all have powers on the bottom. The purple ones do. The blue ones are just victory points. Yeah. And the tan ones are... The tan ones are the actual really cool abilities and yeah. stuff. And the green ones that you can't see very well just allow you to put another trail down, which early in the game you think is useful, but it's not as useful as you would think. Because you only have so many of these pieces of trail. And once all your pieces of trail down, unless you, have, unless you get one of the powers on your board or power on the car that shows the I may move a trail to somewhere else... Once they're down, they're down, and you can't go anywhere you don't have a trail. That's all the jungle you've explored. My main issue with this game is uh, the powers. Some of the powers are a little broken. Well, maybe not broken, but some of them are certainly better than others. Um, getting these powers is definitely a big boost and advantage to the game, in my opinion. That's a big issue I have with this game, is just not enough trails, and I've yeah. I get messed like these things kind of mess me up. By the time they're when they're useful, you're everyone else is grabbing the useful powers. No, I try to I don't do these quite as much as actually grabbing the temples. Like the uh other like Craig said the purple ones are face up. They you do them immediately. The blue ones are victory points, but the, the other temples here, the tan colored ones you just calling them, uh, uh, the base of the temple, the bottom portion is generally end game scoring bonuses. The middle section of the temple is uh, are blue and what you do is you can play them at a certain time and then you discard them. The top part of the temple, the small top portion of the temple are th uh, bonuses you can play throughout the game but you can only have one of each uh, level at a time. But the components are really nice. They definitely top notch components. It is a victory point game. And, excuse me, all the way through the game, you're going to be collecting victory points. It's going to sneeze. One, Wait three, for two, one. Oh! Oh! Good, out of the way. Now, there's where, the, there's where the powers on the board come in. Okay, these things, the tools. Out of his nose? No, they don't come out of the nose. Look who's coming out of the where they come in. <laughs> oh, there they are. <laughs> These tools are laid all beside all the rivers. And if you go by one of those, you're allowed to flip one of these over. So they can only be accessed once unless the last one is flipped over and then they all reset. But the idea about those, those ones allow you to move up on one or more of these tracks. And these tracks give you the cool powers. Like this one, the best one is um, the one that for each, each piece of trail on your longest route, you get two victory points immediately. That one I managed to get like... You 30 got twice, 32, 32 least, or 40 victory yeah. points one track because I had the full length was it was all one continuous thing so I got it brought it all up and got it again I still didn't win because I concentrated on just doing that but it was it made the game really close and made everyone else have to work that much harder because I had so many victory points right at the start but uh, yeah I think all the components and everything in this game is done really well I think well, it's all game well is very put nice together looking. oh yeah it's terrific the artwork on here is nice cartoonish but it's real colorful and it's well done and all that nice balance of color and stuff and all these little fun relics you got here that just, could have just been cool. cardboard tokens but they're yeah. not they're, but they're all cool little closet i love the little purple one is sticking his tongue out at you though that one, like that the crystal skull cool. the, the crystal skull right yes. the skulls wrapping up for relic runners because we would talk about this one all day the, the skulls Steve. did we talk about how it finishes i don't think we mentioned how that game is actually Finish or score the g end game conditions. Number vitals, depending on how many players. There you go. Does Done. Not track. Yeah, what's your no? You can no. still move track around. Read the rule book. It's That's what, yeah. <laughs> you're right. It is <laughs> yes. Yeah. So the theme is you're you're a relic hunter, an Indiana Jones, a Lara Croft. You're running around in the jungle trying to explore all these temples. These that are are the the I don't care. Shut it. Shut it. <laughs> what were you saying? That's the theme. And everything you do in this sort of holds holds with the theme. You have to go back to the base camp and get more supplies to keep exploring in the jungle. If you haven't explored that part of the jungle, you don't know what's there. Faster. 
I mean, that makes sense. Yes, it does. Okay, now faster. Uh, uh, easy to play. Yes, it's very easy to play. Score! Dude, just Give me a score! <laughs> Damn it! You, just, you didn't say the score yet! Come on! <laughs> the score is last, you bitch! No! <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> I feel like Lee Mackin. Uh, uh, no kidding. We go <laughs> shut up! <laughs> you working class asshole. <laughs> anyway... You put the things out there, and you know you do what's on the card. And <laughs> it's really simple because it tells you what the, tells you what these are powers are, and you just put your stuff on the card Easy. every round. Oh, better, okay. And fun to play. It is very much fun to play because it's fast. You can see everything that's going on. The only thing that's hidden is people's victory point totals. And if you're paying attention, you'll know because they have to tell you all the victory points. They're not. They don't hide them from you. They're like, I got four. The only ones you don't see is the blue ones. Yeah. I got some victory points, two, three, or four. I give Relic Runners a 9.5. I think it's well put together. The components and everything are excellent. And yeah, I love the little different idols. They're not cardboard cutouts or anything like that. Uh, all the powers and stuff you get, the options on the board of the different temples and stuff are cool. The different uh, ways of winning the, the, the your player boards here. The, you got a choice of getting different bonuses, like going for different strategies. I like that a lot. Yeah, it's possible to get more toolboxes. So you got multiple paths you know multiple options going on that's a little tough though because people take all those little uh where's the riverside toolbox things and movers whatever you call them and but uh i think all the bonuses and stuff that you can get is great you know i'm gonna have to go right up there with you and give it like a 9.5 as well uh mine's a little bit lower because i find that the getting the random powers can either give a player a really big advantage and uh, I don't know. I only tried it at the three player, and I think uh, we ended up with two people got in the way of each other a little bit, and one guy got left all alone, and he won both times that we played. I think this game definitely needs at least four players, maybe even five. I've only tried it with three. It's not the best with three, but it is good. It is a good game. Very good quality of components and artwork. But the gameplay, it's a little random as far as the, the random powers. That's my only real qualm with this. I give Relic Runners an 8. So that's it for this episode of the Gamer's Table. Tune in next week where we review another game. Because that's, that's what, what we do. We do. Try not to go where not other people colors. are gone if possible. No, these ones. The round ones here yeah. that you can't sort of see. Those are froggy ones. Those are the frog ones. ones. Right. The, oh, I got a crystal skull right there. No, the frog oh, Those frog ones go there. You're right. These are the froggies. Okay, everything's same except for the frog instead of crystal skull. <laughs> <laughs>